Hello Chem 20s, here we go with chapter 5.3. This is on solution concentration. So first and foremost, uh, this is something we can describe qualitatively. And by that, we're just looking at trying to describe how concentrated a solution is, you know, just based upon visual or color or density or something like that. Um, think, you know, a teaspoon of Kool-Aid powder in a glass versus, you know, three heaping tablespoons in a glass. One's going to be very deep colored and one's going to be very pale. Well, the pale one would be considered qualitatively as a dilute solution with very little solute dissolved. The really dark colored one would be considered concentrated because of the large amount of solute that you put into that same size glass. So it is a ratio, all right, between solute and solvent. So this is our starting point for every single description or calculation of concentration. We want to know the quantity of solute and there are certain units that we must follow for certain styles. And we want to know the quantity of um, solution or, oops, that should say solvent or solution. All right, so your total amount of solution is going to be the amount of solvent. Like if you think about it this way, if I put 300 mils of water into a glass, that is my solvent. But if I add Kool-Aid powder to it, have I changed the amount of water in the glass? No, I haven't. So the total solution volume, if your solvent is a liquid, is going to be the same. Uh, we'll do this generally through the factor label method as we get through this, because really we're just looking at the various different units. Now there are three different ways in which we are going to calculate this concentration in Chem 20. And there's one that carries forward through to the last unit and definitely into chemistry 30. And that will be amount or molar concentration. If you're going to pay attention and concentrate on one, this is the one that you must know inside and out and be able to work with well if you want any success in future courses. Parts per million comes up, but it's retaught. It's I, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Percentage, again, it's a very consumer way of looking at things. If you were to go shopping at the grocery store, you'd see a lot of your concentrations given as percentages. So I'll do a couple of examples of percentage and PPM. They will be minimized or reduced on your chapter five quiz, but expect a good number of your calculations on amount concentration. That's the one that I want you guys to focus on. So here's percent concentration. There are three ratios for percent. We can do percent by volume, percent weight by volume, or percent weight by weight. This really just comes around because of the nature or state of your solute and solvent. If I do percent volume, that means my solute was liquid, such as an alcohol, and my solvent was a liquid, such as water. So things like beer, wine, and spirits would be given as a percent volume. Hydrogen peroxide, which is another liquid dissolved in water, if you were to go to the medicine cabinet, you would see its concentration is percent by volume. Other things, like if you were to buy, let's say, a simple syrup or some sort of uh, sugar syrup or something like that. Your sugars are usually given in solids, but your solvent is water. And so we might look at a percent of the weight or mass of sugar per unit volume. And then we can also do things in weight by weight. Liquids, gases, solids can all be weighed. All right, so we have those two things. What's important to realize here, and I'll start this for you guys, is in this percent concentration, all weights and masses must be given in grams, so therefore there is some unit analysis to do, and any liquid volume you have must be given in mils. That means each one of these fractions is grams over milliliters. If a question gives you that, that's great. If it doesn't, you will have to convert, and this is why we use the factor label method. All right, these are percentages, which is really just a fraction over 100, multiply 100 to get rid of the fraction and just express the numerator. So let's look at a couple of quick examples here. If a solution has a mass of 50 grams and contains two grams of solute, well, there's your numerator. All right, there's your solution mass. So we're just weighing the liquid in this case. We're being asked for weight by weight. So remember, any masses or weights that you have here must be measured in grams. Both are, so now we just need to put the formula together. Remember, the formula is always this for all three types. 
it is the amount of solute or the over the amount of solvent or solution and all we're doing is just following the correct units so for this one then my solute is 2.00 grams my solvent is 50.0 grams all right so now I have that that's my ratio of solute to solvent and so I will have a concentration if I want to express this as a percentage I will multiply by 100 so therefore 2 over 50 is just 0 0.04 times 100 is 4.0 percent weight by volume or weight by weight now of course this is your cal uh, calculator answer we must correct that you had three digits here three digits here so we keep going and your most correct answer will be four percent weight by weight see not too bad so long as you memorize your units and memorize the ratio for concentration it should all go fine here's one where we're talking about a percentage weight by volume there's your 2.1 grams of solute but it's got a solution volume of 0 0.150 liters that is not what we want because milliliters is our preferred so we need to change that I have and my starting point would be 2.1 grams of solute over 0 0.150 liters of solvent I can use my metric system to convert that liters are on the bottom so they should go up top mills is what I want that goes on the bottom liters is the bigger unit or the bigger chunk of liquid so I'll make that one and milli means one one thousandth so that must mean there are one thousand mils in every one liter now I have grams per mil now I can multiply it by 100 and turn this into percentage when you run this through your calculator you will get 1.4 percent and we will just put weight by volume to describe it all right parts per million is another quick hitter for us that we should look at parts per million is a very common way of describing very very dilute solutions um, when I was doing environmental chemistry at university and for the government of Alberta a lot of the water chemistry that I was doing we were looking for minute and rare or highly toxic and low dosage pollutants so oftentimes we were doing things in parts per million even sometimes parts per billion so what exactly is a part per million well you want one part sol uh, solute over a million parts solvent that's what you're looking for so easiest way to look at that is in masses one milligram is 0 0.001 a kilogram would be 1000 if you were to divide that out you would get 1 million a milligram per liter if you're talking about water is also the same one per 1 million solute to solvent relationship so if you just memorize these for your parts per mi uh, million all right it'll be an easy conversion so here we go we have two grams of copper two sulfate dissolved in two liters of water I want my concentration in parts per million well I can just go with my numbers there's my solute 2.0 grams there's my solvent 2.00 liters all right I have grams per liter if I take a look at my two starting units I just need to get to milligrams per liter so it's just a quick metric conversion grams would go on the bottom to cancel milligrams up top of the two of masses a gram is a bigger chunk of mass so I always make that equal to one and milli just means one one thousandth so I should have one thousand of those small units now I have milligrams per liter that is also equivalent equivalent to parts per million so I just have to run this through my calculator and we get 2 over 2 is 1 times 1,000 gives us 1,000 milligrams per liter. Now that doesn't fit into our sig digs. We have to get it down to 2, so scientific notation will have to happen here. All right, so we change that to 1.0 times 10 to the 3, which is just the way to write 1,000 with scientific notation. And a milligram per liter is equal to a part per million there we go all right fairly straightforward it'll be confusing a little bit if you're not paying attention to the units but if you memorize the units for percentage and memorize the units for parts per million these questions are fairly straightforward
Okay, we'll take a look at molar concentration in the next video.